don't understand as possible. So Yay. I am very happy to be with everyone today. Uh, again, my name is Julia Men. I am the owner, creator, libations educator at the We Tipple LLC, which is a company I started in the beginning of the pandemic, so early 2020, to keep myself going, give myself a purpose every morning to get up and hear that. do drink. something worthwhile, but something else. <laughs> to get up and drink. <laughs> get up and drink. Why, why not? It's a pandemic. <laughs> it's nine uh, o'clock in the morning somewhere. Right. Let's start. <laughs> oh my gosh. So uh, as Michelle mentioned, I have lived many different places. I got my start in the wine world when I lived in New Zealand back in 2016. I knew very, very little about wine, but I knew I liked it. And New Zealand is renowned for their wine, particularly Savion Blanc. It grows really, really well there. It's their biggest export wine. Caveat, I, they do so many great wines there, far beyond, news, uh, beyond Savion Blanc. So if you come across those wines, try them. They are excellent. They just make a lot smaller numbers of those, so it's difficult to find. But if you do, get them. They're worthwhile. So once I started working in wine, I was the assistant manager of a cellar door on a little island off the coast of Auckland for several months during the summer and holiday season. It was just wonderful. The wines were fantastic. I was learning so much. As many of you are, I am a lifelong learner. I love to learn. I love to expand my knowledge and broaden my mindsets and just learn something fun, interesting, wine, endlessly interesting, super, super fun. <laughs> Uh, so once my time there ended, I tasted throughout basically all of New Zealand. They have a lot of different wine growing regions where they specialize in different types of wine. We will be tasting through a Marlborough Savion Blanc. I hope you have one with you today. If you don't, no problem, but it's very easy to teach with because it's so pungent and delicious. And we'll get to that in a few minutes. Uh, so after doing that, I had heard about the Wine and Spirit Education Trust, which is the former certifying body for wine and spirits education in the world. They're based in the UK, but they have global uh, participation and satellite offices. So if this is something you find you're interested in. Feel free to look up WSET. It's fantastic. I also started getting much more into spirits. So I worked with the Whiskey Ambassador LTD, which is located in Scotland, got certifications through them as well for gin and whiskey. And I've been going ever since. I've worked in wine bars and wineries. I've worked retail. I also do this private teaching, uh, small groups, you know, corporate parties and events, people who want like very specific education. And then also things like this, which are just a bit more fun, more laid back but still uh, you're gonna walk away with some good tips and tricks that you can use. So um, as I can't see anyone else, uh, Linda and Michelle, do you have any wine knowledge? Have you been to wineries before? Has anyone gone to like local tastings or wine dinners? I've done all of that, but yeah, I know so. nothing about wine. I, <laughs> I've been to Napa, I've been wine tasting. I've did a, did, I hosted a wine tasting years ago in our home. Um, I've been to wine dinners, but honestly, I don't know anything about really, I know nothing about wine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know what I like. Yeah, that's um, it. I know what I like. I know what I like. I, I, I love like a full, it's interesting. Well, I always liked red wine the most because it felt more complex to me. It tastes more complex. I love those mm -hmm. berries and licorice and chocolate and mocha flavors, but I'm starting to really appreciate a Pinot Noir. And the, and the elegance of it Absolutely. and the diversity of it. So yeah, I'm all ears. I think you both know more than you think you know because you already know what you like. And yeah. Michelle, good on being able to pick out like the mocha, the chocolate, mm. cherry, the rich earthiness to it. Uh, which brings me to the point, hopefully you all have access to the handy dandy little wine and tasting guide that I gave yes. out. Yeah, um, that's on so my feel phone. free to open that up, follow along. It's so much easier to pick things out when you're smelling or tasting when you yep. see it in front of you, instead of just like, it smells like something familiar. I don't know what. Uh, and that's also something I've really learned about wine. It teaches you to be a conscious consumer. So, mm -hmm. well, I mean, maybe not since the pandemic, you can't really go around in a grocery store, like picking up fruit and smelling it. Uh, but anywhere you can, even in your own pantry, taking out your spices, 
smelling what cinnamon smells like or what nutmeg or cloves, anything like that. That's just going to give you a broader, deeper base uh, for your wine knowledge. Let me so, just interrupt for one second. So yeah. we had to close our Zoom link down <clears throat> and some people are some people are they finding they couldn't can't get on. Um, we so had a problem they, with Zoom. So, <laughs> yeah, we had a problem and we had to redo it. So everyone can just click on the same link again, right? And they should load yeah. up. Yeah, but so close your close your screen, guys. Maureen just commented. Maureen, I'm it says I'm here. She's on the Facebook. She says, I'm here, but when I tried to enter on the device, I needed the meeting ID. I don't know what the meeting ID is. And I think that might be because we messed it up when we closed it and restarted it. I don't know. Just Maureen, if you're listening, which I know you are. Try the link again and see if you can get on it. Um, otherwise, unfortunately, I think you're just going to have to watch from Facebook. I can see if I can send it, but let's keep, we'll keep going. Yeah. Okay. All righty. Always technical Sorry. problems. Don't you love Always. it? I know. They well, can't I just the... make things easy. <laughs> forward, click this button and it works every time. I know. <laughs> Uh, so this is going to be a laid back informal tasting. I'm going to give yes. you some good tips and tricks. Drink at your own pace. I would recommend pouring. So I have three wines, a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, a French Provence style rosé, and a Pinot Noir from California. If you have those, great. If you don't, that's totally fine too. I would just recommend pouring all three of them and you can go back and forth while I take us through. And pour again, them all you now, have me, right, pour them right yep, now. Okay. Go for it. I, I pre-poured. <laughs> oh, I, I took the corks off, but I didn't pre-pour, so I'll pour right now. I figured I'd let him breathe a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I'm breathe. Now, I would recommend, so the first wine I have is Gravel and Loam. It's Ooh, very common, nice. New Zealand Savion Blanc, inexpensive. I think I got this for 12 bucks at the local pack. Wow. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. 2022, Excellent. like New Zealand Savion Blancs. I have so much love for them because <laughs> I got my teeth into wine in New Zealand. So of course I'm going to love everything from New Zealand is great. Right. That's where I fell in love with Pinot Noir actually. And we'll, if I remember, I'll get to that story when we get there, but we only have about like 20 minutes left. So let's jump in. So grab your Savion Blanc. So the reason we swirl a wine is to release the aromatic compounds that are locked into each little drop of alcohol. This doesn't make it less alcoholic, but it just helps release the aromas. Now, different grapes are going to have different aromas, different intensities. Great thing about New Zealand Savion Blanc, it is a very highly aromatic wine. Like, oh, come on, just smell. It is. Smell. Yeah. It smells <laughs> delicious. Oh, that's just, that's heaven in a glass right there, my friends. <laughs> so. I love how passionate she is. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it's wine, it's yummy. <laughs> I'm a nerd. <laughs> now, what are you smelling? Because honestly, while we can tell a lot from the taste and the color and the finish, the most information you're going to get about a wine is by how it actually smells. So you can tell right now the Savion Blanc is highly aromatic. That's the grape varietal itself. It also has to do with the terroir, the ground, the sun, the rain, the weather influences. Was it hot in the morning and cold at night? That sort of thing. So that's also one of the most amazing things about wine is it just takes in its entire environment. Can you tell that by smelling it? About the weather? If it was some people can. grapes. Wow. That's now, impressive. I know, I know those things play into it yeah. by smelling this. Yeah. I can't tell exactly what the weather was like, Right. but I know it's going to be because, okay, good point. If you look on your sheet, your mm -hmm. wine aroma and flavor guide, you'll yep. see, you know, different categories. It's yes. great to work your way from the top down. Okay. And depending on the style of the aromas you're getting, like, like this to me is very green. It's bright. It's herbaceous. You've got a lot of really good citrus in here. You have some underripe passion fruit. You got like freshly cut grass. You have green peppers, a lot of hallmarkers of New Zealand Savion Blanc. Wow. Now, because of those, I can tell this is going to be from a cooler climate. Mm -hmm. 
because cooler climates bring out different aromas. Now, if we had a California Napa Valley Savion Blanc compared right next to this one, that you could expect to be, because the climate is a lot warmer, a lot richer, a lot more really, really ripe tropical fruits. So I bought the, the um, what you had written, the New Zealand White Haven mm -hmm. Sauvignon Blanc. So is that going to be much different than the one you have? Or because it's from New Zealand, that should be somewhat similar? It's going to definitely be in the same wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. These are both from Marlborough. They're, these are both large producers. They're going to be mm -hmm. from a, a very similar place. So okay. it's going to have very similar climate. The soil is going to be different. But in this instance, these are both relatively budget bottles of Savion Blanc from New yeah. Zealand. So they're going to, you know, I'm sure there's grassy notes and really bright yeah. citrus notes, maybe some passion fruit. I can almost pepper. smell the grassy notes when you said that. I can smell yep. that. And fun fact, the grassy notes come from uh, the grape itself. It's called pyrazines. It gives it that bright green flavor. Some oh. people, depending on how intense the pyrazines are, yeah. might liken it to cat pee. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, but a lot of times it comes off a lot softer, a lot more herbaceous yeah. and gently freshly cut grass. Mm. So oh, now that we've been smelling this, I want to drink. So yes. let's friends. Let's Cheers. Sun Cheers. Cheers. Oh. Mm. Now, if anyone is like me, your mouth is really watering. Yes. Might seem a little tart, a little yep. puckery. Yep. That is the acid. New Zealand Savion Blanc, very, very high acid. The more your mouth waters, think if you bit into a slice of lemon, mm -hmm. your mouth is really gonna water mm -hmm. uh, because it has a lot of acid in there. Now, acid is the backbone for a white wine. Mm -hmm. Very, very important. It gives it structure. It gives it balance. Uh, it's just very important. And all wines are going to have acid to some degree or another. Mm -hmm. And again, you can go back to that description of if you bit into a slice of lemon, sky high acid. Other wines, like when we get to our rosé and our red, they're not going to be nearly as high in acid as this New Zealand Savion Blanc right here. Okay. It's very good. Mm. Very good. It's fresh. It's bright. It's. This is almost apple that what I'm drinking. Oh, yeah. You can definitely get behind some green apple, green or mm -hmm. apple, yellow. Yep. It's nice. Green or yellow apple in there. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, and the great thing about acid in wine, it's very, very food friendly. So high acid white wines, great to pair with food, especially you think fatty dishes or something really with a really rich creamy sauce. Um, mm -hmm. It would also be really good for super soft cheeses like brie because that acid cuts through mm -hmm. that fat level. Interesting. Oh, yeah. that's a great tip. Did not know that. So moving right along, the, hopefully... Someone has a rosé of some sort? Yep, yes, I no? do. Hey. Oh, good. <laughs> well, I just have I a bought, I bought this one. It's Mimi. I don't know if you've oh. I've never had that one, so I thought I'd try Mimi that. And yep, I couldn't very... find any of the ones on your list, but I've got Mimi. That's okay. There are thousands upon thousands yeah. of different wines. That's also yeah. a very common one, typically very easy to find. I have uh, the 90 plus reserve um, rosé. From Provence, honestly, this is a reserve rosé and it's only fifteen dollars. Oh, so okay. think about it's cheaper than the Mimi. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. Uh, Provence rosés, New Zealand Savion Blancs, they used to be very low price. Think mm -hmm. you could get a pretty decent bottle for nine to twelve bucks. Wow, those prices just keep eking up for all sorts of reasons that we won't get into because we're not talking politics or world disasters. Right. We're talking wine. Yeah, so. Already you can see, oh, hey, look, there's some color to my wine. Yeah. And that is because it's not necessarily that they just take red wine and white wine and blend them together to make a rosé. Mm -hmm. They really actually just gently press the red wine grapes. A lot of Provence is made from Grenache, Syrah, and Cinso. So it's going to be a blend. Mm -hmm. And they will just gently press the grapes and then maybe let the free run wine run, uh, rest on the skins a little bit because the skins are what gives it that color. Okay. Now this is a very, very pale pink. So yeah. it might've spent four hours on the skins. Mm -hmm. Not very long. Sometimes if you have a really rich, dark rosé mm -hmm. that does not have anything to do with sweetness. A lot mm -hmm. of people have that common misconception. Mm -hmm. uh, it really just has to do with grape varietals and how long it stayed on the skins. As, as with the red wine we're gonna talk about, 
different grapes have different skin pigmentation, different thicknesses. So they're gonna give it different colors. So if you smell this one, you'll notice it has some pretty good aromas, but mm -hmm. it's not nearly as aromatic as that New Zealand Savion Blanc. It's a little right. softer. It's much more fruit, like red berry driven, a little mm -hmm. bit of blossom, but much more strawberry, cherry, maybe a little mm -hmm. bit of angel food cake and whipped cream. Mm -hmm. And also just because you smell something that is potentially sweet, that doesn't actually have anything to do with the wine being sweet. Another common misconception, people think, oh, this is a sweet wine. No, it's a fruit, fruity wine. Yep. It's very fruit forward. When you're talking about a sweet wine, that comes to the actual sugar in the grapes that was left over. So, so when wine... you have an orange wine, what is what makes it orange? Ooh, great question. So like how we get rosé primarily from red grapes, you get an orange wine from white grapes made in a red grape style. So you'll have white grapes, say a Savion Blanc or a Riesling, and you let it ferment and sit on the skins during the winemaking process. And so while the grapes, they're going to be green or yellow in this case, they're going to leach that color into the wine. And so that's what gives it its orange color. Um, Interesting. Mm. Yeah, so take a sip of your rosé and see how it compared to your first wine. Mm. Definitely not as acidic. Nope. You still get a little mouthwatering action. This is medium acidity. Mm -hmm. um, it's juicy. It's light. Mm -hmm. Great with salads, fruits, lighter cheeses, mm -hmm. maybe like finger foods, aperitifs, mm -hmm. that, that sort of thing, uh, or d'oeuvres. Mm -hmm. So great also with fish because um, yep. it's easygoing. So fish can typically be quite delicate or something like sushi, which is a little bit more difficult to pair. Yeah. Rosé is so easy for pairing. It's just, yeah. that's that's what people love about it. Yeah. And that's why people tended to go into the more Provence style in the last several decades. Tavel, which is another region within France, had been the top producer of rosé, mm -hmm. but they do a very, very darkly colored, robust, intense rosé, which I personally love. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But it's just gone out of style as these things are wont to do. People used to love big, bold, buttery California Chardonnays, and that's been in serious decline. People want yeah, more. I used to drink that it's now. It's never been I my favorite. I can't drink it anymore. I don't like it at all anymore. And that was my go to. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I kind of had it with a Chardonnay. Yeah, it's too. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. No it's one, No one wants to be hit in the face with a two by four or yeah. two on a stick of butter. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Right. And then the color, I don't know. It's just something about it. I, I mean, yeah. I'd rather have a, a Chenin Blanc or something like that before I would have that, you know, oh, that Chenin Blanc is fantastic. One of amazing. my absolute favorite grapes. It is. Yeah. yeah. Me too. Lightly behind Riesling in its versatility, but you can make it still sparkling, sweet, dry. It's just, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love Chenin Blanc. It is my too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> Oh yeah. So are there any questions in the Facebook group that popped up so far? Um, Let's see people, you, I, I'm so sorry that you can't get on the zoom. I'm, I'm just glad you're here. On. And, and there's there several have messed people. It up. We messed um, it up, Michelle, when we. Oh, hi everyone. So it's, it's okay. Sorry I can't actually okay. see you and talk with you. I see Gloria and Catherine and Linda and, you know, Maureen is here. Oh. Um, so there are a few people, but you can ask questions guys. Um, yep. Where you see the live feed, uh, feel free to put in any questions that you may have, and we will try to. Um, Catherine says them. she's listening with her wine, but the Zoom yeah. isn't letting her in either. Yeah. I'm, Catherine, I know you joined late. What happened was we had some problems when we logged on, so we ended the meeting for all and re-logged on, and we didn't have a problem. But I'm I somehow we messed it up so that you all can't get back in, and I don't know why. I uh, you know I'm gonna blame Zoom. Because I have yeah. had this issue before when you schedule a meeting and you have the link and then yeah. it doesn't work. And so you have to start all over. Like, yeah. yeah. And from what Linda said, apparently Zoom has been having issues all day. Yeah, I had so. a Zoom meeting this morning and the woman that was hosting the Zoom meeting couldn't get on at all. So she ended up just calling me on the phone. We had our meeting on the phone and she had heard that Zoom was having some issues today. So it, oh, that's OK. It was... We're all here in spirit. Thanks for being with yes. us. Yes. <laughs> Let us raise our red glass, and okay. I have 
Sebastopol Hills from Russian River, California, a peanut oh, oil. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, again, this is not an expensive bottle. You can go, get good wines, you know, 15, 20 bucks. Oh, definitely. Yeah, for sure. It's like, oh, yeah. It's, it's a little harder these days, but yeah. deals are out there. Once you lock into the things you like, mm-hmm. it's, you're going to have a good time with wine. So the first thing I notice about my Pinot Noir, it's practically see-through. I mean, it's red, but if I put a sheet of paper for, with words on it underneath, I could easily read it. And that is because Pinot Noir is a very thin-skinned grape, so it doesn't give a lot of rich, dark, inky color. If you get something like a Malbec, that baby is going to be purple. <laughs> It'll be real dark. <laughs> real dark. Yeah. I like a Malbec with a steak. Yeah. <laughs> Now, this is also a young wine. It's only a 2021 vintage. The older a red wine gets, the more color it loses. So if you're looking at an older vintage, you know, a decade or so, you're probably going to start to see it becoming more rusty or bricky red or or more on the garnet side of things. If you have a really, really old one, heck, that baby might even be tawny colored. Wow. (laughs) So go ahead, smell your wine, and you will notice you get completely different aromas from the white, you'll get maybe some hint of an idea of, okay, I sort of smelled these in the rosé, but not nearly to this level. Like I am getting a lot of like really rich cherry, almost like a cherry, Cherry. dark, wild raspberries, a little bit of earthiness. Oh, that's just, mm, 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 mm. smells like cherries. Is prevalent in this. What am I drinking, Angeline? Oh, yep. So go ahead, have a sip if you haven't already. Also, I'm sucking in, it's habit by this point, but the reason some people slurp their wine is to aerate it even more. So we have it sitting in the glass, we swirl it around, but when you take a sip in and you suck in wine with your you're sucking air with your wine, and you're helping to aerate it and get all of those aroma and flavor compounds to the very back of your nose and back of your mouth, which is where your sinuses are closest. And you actually taste with your sense of smell, not your sense of taste. (laughs) Because your mouth can actually only taste five things, salty, sweet, bitter, sour, and umami. So it can't actually, like your tongue, you're associating this red wine with cherry, your tongue can't chase cherry. That's an olfactory sense. So that's a fun little tidbit about wine. Interesting. Do you have a favorite wine among all the wines? Is that an impossible question for you to answer? It is. <laughs> um, I would have to say if I was pushed, I love Chenin Blanc mm-hmm. for a white wine. And I mm-hmm. really love a good meaty, peppery Syrah, which you'll typically find from slightly cooler climates. New Zealand does amazing Syrah, but you're really not going to find them here in the States, Mm -hmm. (laughs) unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Um, Also Rhone, the Rhone Valley in France, primarily they do blends, but Syrah heavy blends. And I find a lot of nice pepper and meat in there. Mm -hmm. Also, you can find good Rhone wines for $12. (laughs) Mm, Uh, You can also find them for thousands of dollars. So huge range uh, but the flavor is just fantastic Mm -hmm. so we have some questions here i'm going to see if i can get get uh, caught up here um gloria said we're now watching it and it works so she brought her mother along thanks gloria that's fabulous mom (laughs) catherine in spirit with spirits next up for me hubby is evangeline um and Ann Newman has a Justin Cab for the red. Oh, nice. Yeah. And Maureen has uh, an Evangeline. And uh, Gloria has a cab. Let's see. Any questions? I haven't. Can you share Catherine. some details for cabs is what yeah. Gloria is saying. Absolutely. So I'm drinking a Pinot. Several of you are drinking cabs. Cab is going to be much more robust. You're going to get a lot more in your face. Um, going to be very juicy, very fruity depending on where it's from, if you're having a Napa Valley or a California in general, those are typically gonna be very, very fruit forward, rich, robust, pretty easy going tannins because uh, 
new world wines, which California does. Any American wine is going to be a new world wine. It's going to be in a softer, much more approachable style. Whereas if you go to a cab from, say, Tuscany, that's going to be a little bit more earthy, a little bit more weight to it and higher tannins. So tannins are in all red wines, kind of like how acid is the backbone of white wines. Tannins are the backbone for red wines. Again, that has to do a lot with the winemaking style and the grapes themselves. So as Cabernet Sauvignon has thicker skins on their grapes, typically you're going to have a bit more tannin. And tannins took me so long to actually understand. Quick little cheat note, if you drink black tea or black coffee, that kind of drying, grippy vibe you feel in your mouth, on your tongue, people feel it different places. Um, sometimes I feel it like right in my upper gums. Mm -hmm. um, people can feel it on their tongues or their cheeks. It's that really drying, gripping, depending on how intense it is, could be like sandpaper. <laughs> uh, but that's very important to red wines. And that comes from the skins of the grapes, if they're doing whole cluster and whole bunch fermentation. So you get the seeds in there, you get the stems in there. Also comes from oak aging, the oak barrels, which a lot of red wines go through oak aging to help soften them out. Hmm. So uh, Julia, what, what was the rosé you were drinking? Catherine wants to know. I am drinking 90 plus sellers rosé. They do an entry level, which is $10. This is their reserve, which is $15. Nice Provence style, easy drinking, fresh, fruity, nothing not to love. Awesome. So Pinot Noir is wonderful. It's finicky. It is one of the most difficult red grapes to grow because of its very thin skin. It is very prone to diseases and weather patterns, and it just, it doesn't give very big yields. Cabernet Sauvignon, on the other hand, you see it everywhere. It's yeah. very hardy. Yeah. You can grow it in all different, you can grow it in cool climate, really, really hot climates. It will change based on that, kind of going back to what we said about the Savion Blancs, cool versus hot climates. Uh, so you see that with the red grapes as well. And mm, a lot of times uh, cabs will be a base of blends. You'll see them in Bordeaux blends. You know, California does so many different blends. Typically gonna be, have cab sav in there somewhere. Pinot you're not going to see a Pinot blend. If you do, it might be with Gamay, which is very, very similar to Pinot Noir, slightly easier to grow. And typically you'll see that in other countries. Like there's this great Austrian uh, Pinot Gamay blend, some, some in France as well. I'm not even familiar with that. I'll have to look for that. Yeah, same here. Oh, yeah. Julia, could you maybe recommend a couple of wines that would go good with, say, Thanksgiving dinner, which is so heavy and fatty? Because yeah. I know you had said like the acidic wines go good with fatty, but a lot of people don't want to drink like a white, necessarily a white wine. So maybe you could recommend yeah. a couple of things for like Thanksgiving dinner. That's awesome. Absolutely. Uh, so Pinot Noir, going to be top of the list goes, it's very easy to pair because it's so soft in and of itself. Now okay. the trouble might come in where the food is going to be so rich and so heavy, it's going mm -hmm. to overwhelm it. Mm -hmm. So a great red alternative is going to be Zinfandel or Primitivo. If you're in the Italian wine section, same okay. grape, different names. Grapes have so many different names. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a really classic pairing because it has a little bit more oomph, a little bit more structure. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to have a little bit more tannin. So it's going to go great with like dark meats or slightly heavier sauces. Mm -hmm. um, Riesling, a lot of people misunderstand Riesling. Now this is white grape, but it is astonishingly versatile. Um, oh. And because it has that super high acid, like Savion Blanc does, mm -hmm. it's going to be great with your, you know, mashed potatoes and gravy, anything fatty. Uh, mm -hmm. If you do ham, some people do ham for uh, Thanksgiving. Like mm -hmm. that's going to be really good. Um, also tidbit about pairing. So we know acid is good for wine. It's always fun to play with opposites. So if you have something that's like super spicy, I mean, not necessarily for Thanksgiving, but if you like spicy food, Indian or Thai food, you might want to try uh, a sweet wine because oh. that will help offset. It's not going to have those high tannins. And if you have like a spicy dish and a high tannin red, they're going to clash. Some people might love it, but most won't. So what what's a sweet wine? Oh, Something like a um, uh, 
Oh, what is a Malbec? Is that what you mean? Like a sweet wine? Or no, wine? Um, Malbec typically isn't sweet. Uh, you could look at Vouvray. You could look at a dessert wine, any sort of oh, dessert wine, okay. something fortified. Ooh, okay. Going back to Thanksgiving, port. Port is fantastic because it is rich. It's heavy. It does have some tannins, but it is sweet. So it's going to be great with your Thanksgiving day desserts because you want to pair your sweet foods with your sweet wines. Okay. If you're a sweet food with a not sweet wine, that, that doesn't really work so well. Yeah, People love to sense. pair dark chocolate with red wine. I'm like, that's a mm -hmm. terrible pairing because <laughs> chocolate has tannins in it and yeah. so does red wine. Yeah. <laughs> so it can work, but typically if you were having dark chocolate, I'd go with a ruby port. It's inexpensive, it's delicious, it's slightly higher alcohol, but it's gonna pair nicer with your desserts. Okay. I like to use port to make my sangria. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. and, and good with spicy like Spanish food and yep. you know, whatever. Absolutely. Here's a question for you from Maureen. She wants to know about organic wines. Do you have anything to say about them or any suggestions or? I have a lot to say. We don't have a lot of time, so I'll keep it brief. Yes, organic wines are important and they are really rising to prominence thanks to marketing people. Mm. <laughs> now, a lot of wines, especially in other countries, California is its own thing. <laughs> um, a lot of wines are going to actually be made organically. So that doesn't, that means they're not going to be spraying anything and everything on their vines at the first sight of disease or pest. They're going to use a much more holistic, better for the grapes, better for the overall vineyard and health of that terroir to boost the grapes and, and keep them healthy versus just spraying Roundup or whatever new fad chemical is out there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it is going to be cleaner, typically healthier, um, but kind of in minuscule amounts. And also it costs a lot of money mm -hmm. to certify yourself as organic. So a lot of the old world producers, like we've been doing wine this way for hundreds of years. This is how we do it. We're not going to pay thousands upon thousands of dollars to get certified. This is how we've always done it. Right. Now, it's very difficult to know which ones are organic if they don't label it. That's why if you have a great wine shop, they will label them as organic, even if the wine bottle itself doesn't say it on the label. They'll know from talking to the winery or talking with their wine reps that, okay, this is organic. So if you have a knowledgeable person at your favorite package store, like go there, talk to them. They have so much information, hopefully, and are really happy to point you in the right direction. That's great advice. I always wondered about that because, you know, you think about these old, like I went to Italy and we actually toured a vineyard and I don't think this vineyard uses Roundup. I mean, it's nope. a really old oh, vineyard, but it certainly wasn't labeled organic wine. But yeah. you got to wonder, especially these European, like in France and Italy, they're growing it the old fashioned way. These these vineyards have been around for hundreds of years. And Yeah. Um, and also look for smaller producers mm. because they're not going to have the money or the wherewithal, uh, but they're gonna treat their vines really, really well. They're going to look for biodiversity in their vineyard. They're gonna plant cover crops and you know entice the local wildlife. They're gonna get birds in there because they right. want the birds to eat the pest insects. Sure. Yeah. Okay. If you have something like a mass brand from California, like Josh, that's gonna be a lab wine. Hate to break mm -hmm. to you. Josh is so popular. They have an amazing marketing team to make it pretty much the number one wine. It's made in a lab. There are so many different additives and chemicals that they put really? together. They're I've never heard of them, Josh. It's called Josh Wine? Yeah. yeah. It's if you go into it. it, basically, oh, I am so okay. thankful for you. <laughs> <laughs> never heard I of it. I am so bored of Josh because it's like everyone says Josh. It's like really you I've see something never else. I don't care it what it is, earthquake, it. anything. <laughs> Yeah. Huh. Right. I mean, yeah, yeah it's what I don't know. say if you have a Josh and compare it to something even like Justin, um, mm -hmm. both California wines, mm -hmm. if you taste them side by side, I'm sure you would taste the things that are in Josh um, because it's going to have sugar because Americans love sugar. <laughs> so they're going to put sugar into Josh. 
And if you pair it next to something that doesn't have those added in, it is night and day. Anyone can tell the difference. So what, this is called Josh Wine? Yeah. J-O-S-H? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have I've never heard of this or seen it. I've That's okay. Don't go out and look for it. <laughs> yeah, you're not missing anything. <laughs> Seriously, I, is it like something sold at Trader Joe's or something? I mean, I've it's never sold, heard of like, this. Everywhere. Trader I Joe's, I think, does primarily. Every, and and it's like a really? restaurant standard almost. Really? Oh, my God. Yeah, I've like never for, heard of it. I mean, you know, a medium range restaurant that's kind yeah. of. Really? I mean, so if you order the house wine, you're getting Josh? Quite possibly. Because if you go to a fine Italian restaurant, you probably won't see Josh. Yeah. yeah. But any, if you go to a stand, you know. Any restaurant thing or, or, <laughs> or I don't wine know how I missed this. Salt? I've never heard of it. Yeah. That's okay. You're not missing it. Uh -oh. Jeez. But honestly, a lot of huge brands think Bogle or Dark Horse or Menage a Trois or, you know, I have hundreds of examples. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they are going to be primarily chock-a-block full of chemicals because California doesn't demand that they label things. Um, there are 85 different things they can put into wine and not have to declare it. So that's another question, like the super cheap wines, like the, you know, the there are some super cheap ones and especially I'm thinking like barefoot wines that are like $5.99. Are those all chemical? I mean, they taste terrible, but are they made in labs too? I Pretty much. And, yeah. and you didn't even say two buck chuck. I was going to say two buck chuck, but I didn't know if everybody, I, okay. I used to drink that back in the day. I did too. And I, I drank that all mine. the time. I was so proud of myself. Oh my God, two dollar bottle of wine. Like, um, I don't drink it anymore, but I have tried barefoot and it was awful just yeah. awful is that <laughs> because, because they, it's chemical wine made in labs yeah i mean oh. technically they take grapes they're going to take really crappy overgrown mm -hmm. oversaturated with water grapes that don't yeah. have any natural right. flavor right. because they make it on such a scale there's literally yeah. no way you could actually right. make grapes on that scale sure. so yes double-edged sword you yeah. absolutely can find inexpensive wine primarily if you're in europe uh, or another country in a small right. fingering region, yes. even a four or five euro oh, yeah. bottle yeah. of wine. And, and it's, it's good. good. And it's, it's delicious. delicious. Yeah, it's, it's great. So delicious. Yes. Yeah. Um, so there is, just there is a lovely wine called Midnight out in California. They kind of do small batches and it's mm -hmm. pretty nice. I don't know if you've had their wines, but I have not. I don't see them here. I used to see them yeah. in Boston at a little boutique shop. But um, yeah. and that's the thing. Like, also, we're not here to shame or be snobby or anything. Right. There are plenty of great wines at all different price points. Plenty of <laughs> also not great wines, but at affordable price points. My parents, Lord love them. They love Carlo Rossi. That right. is their wine of right. choice. And you know right. what? It brings them a lot of joy. Yeah. So, hey, good on them. Made in the lab, but yeah. hey, that's fine. Plenty of people Plenty of people. So design. how do you know that you're getting a, a wine made in the lab versus a wine made in a vineyard the old fashioned way? Is there a way or, to tell? Yeah, or added sugar. So I mean, you have to do your digging. If it is some big, big brand that you can find. Like Mondavi, which was a oh, yeah. big, huge vineyard. Oh. Is that all made lab made? Oh, it's definitely doctored in the lab. I mean, they have hundreds upon hundreds of acres of vineyard. Yeah. So yeah. they do actually, like all of these wines are going to have grapes in them. But then they're going to be completely doctored in the lab yeah, to taste okay. exactly the same, bottle after yeah. bottle, because that's what the American consumer wants. Right. So it's like McDonald's of, yeah. of vineyards. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I've learned so much, Julia. This has been awesome. So someone is asking, I can't because she's asked it so many times. <laughs> hey, Gloria, I hear you. I see you. Um, how do you know there's added sugar? And does it have to do with the alcohol content or, or, at all? No, not necessarily. Again, you... That's going to be a difficult thing until you've tasted and learned a lot about wine to know. Um, marketing has gotten better. So I know in the store I used to work at, they would have, we had a section that had no added sugar wines. Mm -hmm. And we only put their, the wine bottles that were labeled and branded by the producer as no added sugar most wine doesn't have added sugar. So I would highly recommend you folks go look at the different aisles in your store, not just the big brand name aisles. Go to France, go to Italy. They're not going to be adding a lot of junk that 
Americans add to their wine. <laughs> Like go for the smaller, go to, I mean, Portugal might have some residual sugar in their wine, but they're not going to be dumping sweetener in there. Um, wines can also be naturally sweet. So it's, again, find a local person at your favorite bottle shop. Hopefully they know what they're talking about and can guide you in the right direction. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And it's fun to experiment with different regions of the world. I mean, I've, I have found some beautiful wines from South Africa, mm. Chile you know so many beautiful mm -hmm. wines yeah. it's just fun to experiment and see yeah. what what's yeah. out there. Portugal is fantastic Portugal is one of my new favorite wine regions along with Greece because mm -hmm. Portugal the wines are so inexpensive yeah but they're really really good quality and you get a lot of fun stuff like field blends so you have 20 different grapes in the wine that you don't necessarily know because they're all like tiny small parcel native varietals but it's delicious wow. so look at portugal greece does phenomenal wines i am in love with greek wine. i have to try that i have i yeah. don't think i've ever had a wine i don't think i ever have either yeah. portugal we got really into that a few summers ago and we were doing all portugal wines but i definitely have to try the greece ones yeah any final questions can you, you see the facebook page um Maureen, if you like uh, Miomi red, does that mean their white will be similar quality? Yes. Also, hate to break to you, Miomi is going to be one of those mass producers, so they add stuff in. Now, highly encourage you to go get a bottle of Miomi and a Pinot Noir from France. Taste them side by side and be amazed. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, anything else? I think we got them. Um... So Catherine says, Josh is the party wine. It's so funny. I've never heard of it. Everyone, it is the party wine. Everyone's I... heard of Josh. I don't know where I've been under a rock because I've never heard of it. <laughs> That's okay. Stay under your rock. <laughs> or oh, you know, yes. go out there and taste it. Go and get uh, a different cab from somewhere else. Taste them side by side and you will see what I mean. It's going to have sugar. It's going to have a very just its own sort of flavor. Mm -hmm. Gloria has a great suggestion. She says, let's plan a tour with Julia. Yeah, Ooh. I'm down with that. I mean, hey, I, I, have, I thought awesome about idea. Maybe one day down the road, we'll get there. Yeah, we'll talk more about that. And for those of you who want to learn more from her, she does have her site um, and you can, she has courses on it so you can do more. And also we can bring her back. Yeah, we, we can do, do the next level of more in depth, like more, more analytical wine tasting, yeah. food and wine pairing, all sorts of things. Focus on reds, focus on a certain region, all sorts of things. So, yeah, yeah you can follow me at the We Tipple on Instagram and Facebook or the We Tipple LLC.com if you want to reach out to me personally or, you know, see a bit more of my history, things I've done. So, it's been fabulous. Thanks, ladies. This has for been great. This, so this has been Thank so you good. Thank you so much. Yes, that was I, so fun. It really I was. I see you around town for sure. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Julia. We really appreciate it. Thank you, everybody who. Yes, thank you. Everyone sorry about the on. Zoom thing, but at least you got a chance to see it live. I'm glad we still stream it on the page so that you oh can. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Yes. Right. So absolutely. So goodbye, out. everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you so day. much. Thanks, Thank Julia. You. Bye bye. Appreciate it. Bye.